I've been using the Samsung Galaxy A55 for quite a few weeks now, and it's been a great mid-range device with good performance and lots of features. One of the features is that the phone sports a dual SIM card slot, where the second port can also be used for a microSD card. We'll discuss the memory expansion separately, but in today's video we'll discuss using dual SIM cards, how to set it up, configure it, and how it works in practice. As usual, we'll need a SIM ejector tool, either a typical one, a more fancy one, like the one from Nothing Phone 2A we're also reviewing, or something as unfancy as a paper clip. I went with the Nothing one to remove the tray from the top of the device. As mentioned before, we have two slots. For the SIM 1 slot, we can just insert it vertically, with the Wii cut at the bottom left corner matching the cut on the Nano SIM card, and the contact pins going upwards. Make sure it clicks. For SIM 2, we actually need to place it horizontally, as the vertical position is for micro SD cards. We have the cut corner at the bottom right this time. Let's put the SIM tray back in, aligning the SIM tray holes accordingly. As soon as we plug it in and turn the device on, the initial SIM card setup will pop up automatically, which in my opinion is a fantastic feature. You can do all the configuration here, so let's see what we can do. The first screen is just to rename the SIM card aliases. I'll just keep mine as they are, but if you have a personal SIM and a work SIM for example, you can rename them accordingly. Next, we can select the preferred SIM for calls. The default is SIM1, so all calls will just go through SIM1, and you can also set it to SIM2 if that's your main SIM. The more interesting option is Ask Always, which means that before each call, you'll get a pop-up allowing you to pick which SIM card should be used for that specific call. You can actually expand this on a per-contact basis. If you go to your Contacts app, click on a contact, you can then choose the default SIM card for just that number. Either use phone's default, or always use SIM 1 or 2, no matter what the default is. It can be quite useful for work phones. Back in the settings, I just went with SIM 1. Next, you can pick the default for texting, but there's no option to always ask, you need to pick one here. Similarly, for mobile data, you can go for SIM 1 or 2, but there's no option for asking, as it wouldn't make sense. However, you can disable mobile data altogether if that's what you want. If you have limited data on both cards, you can allow data switching and backup calling, which can come in handy if you might run out of data allowance. I'll just switch it off for now. And there we are, we're in the SIM manager now, where we can see the two SIM cards we have just configured. We can also add an eSIM. Let us know if that's something you'd like to see, or to change the preferred SIMs we've just configured. You can make changes at any point. You can also change more SIM settings at the bottom. The first option doesn't do much, other than renaming the SIM cards, but you can also add SIM security, in case you want access to a SIM card be controlled by a PIN code. Definitely useful if you're a spy. If you want to make further changes, go back and go to mobile networks. Here you can enable or disable roaming for both SIM cards, and also enable or disable specific network bands like 5G, if that's something you want to do. You can also configure network operations manually per SIM card if you need to. So how does it work in practice? If you enable always ask for calls, you'll be asked which SIM card to use before the call is made, which might be useful if you want to have that level of control. As mentioned, it can come in handy if you have separate work SIM, or maybe one for roaming and one without. Answering phones doesn't require any extra actions though. If someone calls either of your SIM cards, you'll just have to pick it up. There's no big warning which SIM card is being used to answer the call, there's only a small icon. In my case a blue icon for SIM 1 and purple one for SIM 2. When I check the call log after the two calls from my wife, again I can see the two icons. Too bad it doesn't show the SIM names, but it's not a big problem. For sending text, there's a SIM card icon next to the text box, so you can use either of your SIM cards as you're typing. You should be able to get text from both SIM cards without having to change anything else either. And that's it when it comes to using dual SIM cards. I'm quite impressed with how easy it is on Samsung's One UI, especially with the setup window showing up automatically as soon as you insert the second SIM card. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments section below, leave us a like if the video helped you, and make sure to subscribe to see more videos from us. 
But for now, thanks for watching.